Oftentimes, while on the hunt for other mysteries, sometimes you'll discover something you weren't really looking for. Perhaps you're reviewing an area for a specific object, but something else catches your eye. Or you're so fixated on what you just discovered that when something else pops up in your radar, you're torn on what you should focus on. This is exactly what happened with Dusty Dune Galaxy for me. In a previous video, I covered a lost launch star that was present in the level, with no real way to reach it. However, during the research and discovery process for this video, something else muddied the water. After a previous video highlighting extremely difficult 1-Up Mushrooms, I had people reach out to talk about how there was a pair of eyes beneath the sand in Dusty Dune Galaxy. Now, this was really strange to me simply because I spent a lot of time exploring the galaxy already, but it's always possible that things can be overlooked. It's happened before, and I had just found this launch star that I was already writing about, so I sort of adopted this as a side quest so to speak. Now, when I received these messages and comments, they were mainly sourced around the idea that you could see the eyes on a website called Noclip. Noclip is a website that lets you explore certain areas in video games through a 3D viewer. It certainly helped out a lot this year for me in terms of getting footage for some cinematic shots, as prior to Noclip, some games were difficult. So I ended up booting up Noclip and swinging on over to Dusty Dune Galaxy to take a gander myself. And lo and behold, a set of eyes were staring back at me just beneath the surface of the planet. They were just creepily staring out into the void, between three overlapping outer boundaries of the level. The exact location of these eyes are positioned between the underground pipe area and the final interior section for the Seeker Star Treasure of the Pyramid. As a quick side note, underground areas in Super Mario Galaxy 1 and 2 are usually stored out of bounds on the same map. This is what those dimensional pipes look like from a different angle, and this is that final area I was talking about. The eyes are just offset between these two objects. Now the way things work in this game are that certain objects are tied to specific scenarios. In order for this underground section to appear, and also the eyes, the scenario for blasting through the sand needs to be loaded, because the secret star branches off that normal scenario. Knowing this, I booted up the game and enabled my flying mod. In order to get below this giant sandy planet without dying, I pretty much had to fly to the edges of the map to where the collision ended for the sinking in the sand. Once you're past that point, you can glide under the planet. However, once I looped around to the underground areas, something was off. The eyes I expected to find there weren't there. The underground regions were, but not what I was looking for. So I thought on a whim that perhaps maybe they were loaded into the wrong scenario. But no matter what stars I tried, the eyes would not appear there. At this point, I was scratching my head. I decided to open up the level file itself to see if the eyes existed on this scenario by actually cycling through the in-game files. All the scenarios are written in Japanese, but using objects and also the similar character set I saw in Noclip, I tried to find a match. And once again, this was a no-go. There was an object in the area where the eye seemed to be, but it was labeled as Demo Group, and I had a strong feeling that wasn't what I was looking for. So the only thing I could think of was that the online reference that people were showing me was off in some regards. So I reached out to Jasper, who runs Noclip, to bounce the question off him. So first and foremost, the most important thing was to determine what the name of the object actually was. Despite playing the game plenty of times, for some reason it was slipping my mind. I know I had seen it before, but I wasn't sure where. And even if I had seen it before, it still didn't explain why it was placed extremely far out of bounds. A random set of eyes askew in the depths of a sandy planet. Because Noclip was the only reference point we had at the moment, it was what we had to utilize to determine the object name. I looked through a separate fan-made level editor named Whitehall, but couldn't find the object in there. So with Jasper's help, we sifted through 566 objects and toggled the visibility of each one to narrow it down. The final result? An object called iBeamer. Knowing the object name helped out a ton, because that allowed me to search for it elsewhere and recall it. So iBeamers are most notably from Dreadnought Galaxy. Or at least to me they are, because they're all over the place trying to zap you. Seeing the iBeamers out of context in the void threw me for a loop in Dusty Dune Galaxy. At this point Jasper had sent over a screenshot of the level loaded up in an editor, but this time specifically set to the zone they were in. This once again was confusing, because the eyes had seemingly switched places. Knowing they were bound to this planet though helped jumpstart my memory, because now I had an absolute reference point. I finally was able to find them in my editor, but again, they were in a completely different position. As to why the objects are in different places in the game, in Whitehall and in Noclip, well it's because fans haven't quite cracked the code to figure out how some objects are loaded and placed, so the tools aren't always accurate, even amongst each other. However, upon traveling to this planet in this level, that's when I realized that there are indeed two iBeamers that patrol this planet. They just graze the top of the camera range though, so I didn't think of them as iBeamers initially. 
However, in terms of how these objects are loaded, there's still an interesting problem. The I-beamers on my end were positioned extremely far away from the planet, whereas Jasper's were far away as well, except in a different direction and beneath the sand. Upon loading though, they appear around the planet, and traveling to their actual origins via flying shows that they aren't there. But this is problematic because this is a strange behavior. This type of behavior isn't uncommon, but in the context of this object, normally it retains its position. In Dreadnought Galaxy, the I-beamers are set in place, and then follow a specific path, rotating around the object they are set to patrol. So why is Dusty Dune's I-beamers set so far away, only to warp across the map? No other objects are stored this way in the level, so it's bizarre. This behavior does happen in games, but this specific case is just a strange outlier. It's definitely perplexing. However, I will say it was a lot of fun hunting down this mystery and trying to solve it. It kind of reminded me of the mysteries I'd pursue as a kid, where something hypothetically existed, but trying to find it was so thrilling. Since these I-beamers kept eluding me, I got that sense while trying to pursue them. There were no resources online that had documented the movement pattern, so it truly was a mystery that lacked an answer. Even if the end result still doesn't explain why these I-beamer locations are different than others in the game, it was still a thrill to document. A big shout out to Jasper for helping out with this. I highly recommend checking out his website Noclip for exploring all kinds of amazing gaming environments. It's helped me out a lot on this channel this year by allowing me to snag specific shots from games. So definitely check out noclip.website if you have the time. And with that, thanks for tuning in to this Sandy Search. Want more Mario Mysteries? I have you covered. Thanks for watching guys and gals, and until my next video, cheers.